Good morning. <laughs> we have a very grey day here in um, Croatia and it's slightly raining so we're inside once again. It feels like it's going to be like that all week this week. So luckily we're doing plenty of work here so <laughs> uh, hopefully the weather won't disturb that. How is everyone this morning, Sunday morning? You know, we realised that we started this on the 20th, was it the 20th? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the 20th. And, uh, you know, the daily meditations, we started on the 20th. And actually the 20th will be the last day that we will do it daily. So that's very interesting, three months, 90 days. Interesting how that works out. Oh, you're lucky you've got a sunny day, Rosalind. We wish we had a sunny day here because it's um, very grey and a little bit chilly. But anyway, the squirrels are running around, which is nice. So Yanni likes to watch them. I hope everyone's feeling fired up for today. I feel very clear today. I had a really good sleep and um, I feel really relaxed and happy to be here. Happy to be in Croatia and happy to be about to start a wonderful meditation with everyone that we can um, join together. It's really interesting, I think, you know, because I get a lot of messages from you. Oh, thanks, Rosalind. We, I get a lot of messages telling me what's going on in your lives. Very fascinating for some. Um, the sense of peace and connection, but also calm and knowing that it, deep inside everything will be all right. And it will be. It will be. So I'm really happy that you're feeling like that. And I'm hoping that, you know, when we go to, to, to doing this twice a week, that you can sit for some minutes every day and breathe in. And most importantly, connect here here and and do your your vortex and i'm sure that you can do it very fast like a couple of breaths you know i was going to do that from the beginning but then i realized you know most days we have new people coming in or people who haven't don't come in regularly so i realized that i can't actually just go okay next breath next breath but you can you can when you're at home you can just go couple of breaths into your third eye, opening that up, a few breaths into your heart, shifting that over. So I want you to understand what we've been doing because slowly we have been activating and aligning you with the, we could say merging yourself with your soul. So that's why some of you are experiencing a, an awakening of gifts or an expanding of gifts that calmness that you're feeling, that inner knowing that everything's going to be okay, it's because you're aligning with your soul more. And that's why we align the third eye, the, the connection with the universe, with our connection with our brain. And that water that surrounds your brain is actually connected to what I what is commonly called as morphic fields or collective consciousnesses. So morphic fields are, I would say, they can be any size and and so they're where people think in the same manner and because you think the same way you congregate together and you live in the same reality right so what we've been doing is by aligning that we are actually aligning ourselves with the universal knowledge and laws around um, what we want to imprint this world with because this world has gone past its use by date with the you know an old paradigm running the show let's say and because we're moving into 5d we need to think and be in a different way so you know for me it's really been in some ways a challenge to not go into the duality of thinking to not pick a side to try and understand how other people feel when I I truly think in my own mind that's dangerous or that's not right but having to take that middle road and go 
okay, it's all right that they think that way and at some point maybe they'll move over. And what I'm referring to is not necessarily people who have a different opinion than me. I mean, people who live by very violent means or people who um, operate very corruptly. That, that can sometimes be very difficult to, to kind of not have a strong reaction to when you see that. For me, my raw spot is abuse towards children and women. That will get me fired up and I have to kind of go, okay, Susan, you know, calm down. And what can you do in a positive way to shift this so that it no longer happens? I don't accept that it needs to continue and I don't accept it as a reality but I also understand that the only way I'm going to change it is not by resisting it and getting angry it's by coming into within myself that it doesn't exist and that's a real challenge because I understand that if I can come into alignment with the universe where in the universe that sort of behavior I mean in the light universe it doesn't exist and that's what we're bringing onto the earth we're bringing onto the earth a reality where everybody connects in a beautiful way and understands that harming another is actually harming harming yourself so we do that then we go to our heart and we take our physical heart resonance and we join it with the universal heart resonance so we're doing these things methodically so we started off not doing that we started off in a different way very gently just opening your third eye cleaning out your brain awakening different parts of your brain you know then we moved into uh, you know joining the hearts together and then we started creating our zero point vortex and and that it's all been stages and look I didn't consciously do that that's from spirit spirit consciously did that and when I look back I see ah oh, yeah now I understand why as I'm sure many of you do it's not that you weren't ready for it it's just that um, it it's it's like a sequence you know when we they always remind me when we learn in school and I take maths as an example you know, when you're five and you're six and you're learning your mathematics, the multiplications, remember how they would write it on the wall and you'd have to repeat it, repeat it. And then you would start learning how to subtract and divide and all of this sort of thing. So it's methodical. And then as you age, you start learning fractions and, um, you know, a lot of the weird stuff that I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you start to, but it's true though, isn't it? I'm, I'm, you know, I know simple maths, but nothing too complicated. But you start to learn all these formulas, and that's as you grow and your mind can cope with that amount of information and the way the information moves. And it's the same with spiritual knowledge or, or, you know, spiritual ways of being. We have to go through these basic steps. To get to where we want to go because if we miss a step it's like missing a year of school you don't actually understand now where you're at mathematically and and I see this a lot actually and it's why I would often do this uh, spiritual foundation groups because I see people who go and they do these amazing workshops but the knowledge is here but they actually don't have a foundation so what they've learned isn't integrated and uh, so it's not as powerful or impactful as it could be if they had that foundation. So that's why I run those sort of groups. And, and often I would get, maybe one or two people would contact me and say, I'm really drawn to your course, but you know, I've done a lot of courses like most of us. I've done a lot of courses and I know a lot. And what if I get there and I know everything and I've paid this money? And I say to them, okay, if you come to the course and you feel that you know everything and you, it, it's not serving you, I will not be offended. You can leave. You can have your money back. Um, it won't offend me at all because I've been in that situation myself. No problem. Every I have never had someone come up to me and say, I want a refund. I didn't learn anything. Every one of those people, without fail, has come to me and said, I had no idea 
I thought I knew everything, but I, I, I actually had no idea. Thank you. I learned so much because the basics are often forgotten and the basics are your foundation. That's actually your power center. So it's a really good idea to understand. And that's what we've been doing in this almost 90 days. We've been doing the building blocks of your spiritual connection. So even though, you know, some of you have said, and I know some people have contacted me and they said, oh, you know, when we get to the guides, I don't get anything. And so they decided it was too difficult and they moved themselves away from it and didn't continue. And I, and I would encourage them to actually continue because you don't build a bridge in a week. You know, this is this, is this modern day thing where we want everything instant, instantly. We want it all instantly. And um, it doesn't happen like that. It really doesn't. When you are an apprentice at anything, it takes two or three years to know the foundation of your knowledge. It's the same with spirituality. It's the same with understanding yourself and how you connect and how you create. It doesn't happen in a week. It doesn't happen in a weekend. So we've gone through merging these parts of ourselves, unity consciousness. Cassandra's always saying, you can't go to uni unity consciousness using a crystal or a symbol or cheating in a way. You can't get there through saying, I'm there, you know, or this crystal's gonna get me there, or this symbol or this thing. It doesn't happen. It has to come from within. It needs to be a merging of your soul and your mind and your body so that's unity consciousness right um, in the churches they always say father son holy ghost that's actually separating you into a male paradigm but anyway I won't go into that so that's right we're not we're not used to receiving that's right so so then we go from there and we move our energy down the zero point I just want to talk about that for a second Zero point energy is the present moment. And, you know, I'm saying in the meditation, it's the strongest, it's the strongest part of you being in the present moment. I see people wanting to manifest something, but it's always in the future. When I get this, when this happens, when that, and then it doesn't happen, just doesn't happen, you know, or they're thinking about the past, obsessing with the past. And so you can't manifest today from 20 years ago you know so this is sort of what's going on at the moment particularly in the states you know people are talking about the past what happened you know 100 200 years ago and getting angry about something that's not it actually in the present moment as much as they think it is <clears throat> so I'm not negating that they might have issues but what I'm saying is bringing up the past is is not going to <clears throat> in the way that they're doing you know so healing the past is better rather than getting angry about it so you know creating that zero point energy puts you in the present moment and it empowers your ability to manifest and the reason that they bring that in is because we are co-creating 5d so they want that to be empowered then we go to the earth and we go to the elements and this is part of the foundation that I've taught for probably, you know, I mean, before Gallum was born, you know. So um, if you don't, and, and, and I learned that from so strongly from that um, uh, shaman that I worked with for years. And, and so if you don't understand how elements work, your ability to manifest will be limited. So if you're good at manifesting, imagine how amazing it will be. <laughs> when you really connect with the divas and the elements because they're responsible for everything that's been brought into the physical, everything we use to bring into the physical a reality. So they are a foundation that most people don't care about because <clears throat> they think, they think, uh, you know, oh, I'm going to the big guns. You know, I hear this a lot. I'm going to the big guns. I'm going to the masters completely ungrounded all of you have seen it you know 
ungrounded spiritual people who are going, I've got no money, I, I can't cope with life, I need to hide away, because they're ungrounded. They're not in this reality. They're somewhere else because for whatever reason. But so that's why we connect first with the elements of the earth. We connect with the earth first. Before you want to manifest something, you want to connect with where, you, where it's supplied from, right? Here is not supplied from. And people think it is, but it's not. It's not supplied from here. It's supplied from the earth. Here is where we get inspiration, ideas, you know, encouragement, empowerment. That's, that's, that's where that, that comes from. But it's supplied from these amazing little folk, you know. Then we go to our guides. Once we're grounded and we're locked into the present moment, we're in alignment here with the universe physically, emotionally, mentally and spiritually. We're in alignment. Then we go to our guides and that's when we can find uh, that inspiration, that guidance, that what we're looking for. But we can also receive healing from that point. And then when we connect all of those, we bring them down, we bring it to the heart, neutral and then we take it out. So that's what we've been doing over these past few months. And it's been a progression of knowledge, a, a progression of ability, and it's a foundation for you all. And I, I can say to you with all, with all honesty, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big part of what I teach. And you've all been gifted this. So I would ask you to use it with integrity and use it from your heart because I want people to um, improve their lives and I want your lives to be healthy, wealthy and wise. I want you to be happy because the more people who are happy and in alignment with themselves, the better the world, the better the chance of this world surviving what's coming in the next few months, you know, the next six months or so, the better we are able to cope. So. I, I, I've gifted you that and then once a week we're going to empower it and, and do different things but we'll do the same model but we'll add to it. Okay, so you're welcome to join when we do that. Please, uh, because it's uh, you know twice a week, try to get other people to join because the more we have doing this frequency at the same time, the stronger we lock it in. There's a big battle going on and you can't even miss it. At the moment there's a division going on and we are the centerpiece so we have this opportunity to group to put a wedge in the middle of this division and create something quite new and what is that unity consciousness right we are the center bridge so that's why I'm, I was saying you know it's important that we don't go into um, too much of that duality and start getting angry about things. Yes, we understand that it's happening, but getting angry isn't going to solve it at all. Actually, staying clear and saying, not in my reality, you know, our no, and, um, and staying clear on what we want will be the best thing because this is a war on consciousness and they're trying to take our consciousness to create what they want because they understand the power of who you are. And because you have gone through what you've gone through in the last three months and learnt what you've done and aligned, you're far more powerful in your ability to manifest and create. So I employ you to really look at what you're putting attention on. And I'm not talking about ignoring because I know I get that. Oh, you, you mustn't ignore. I don't believe in ignoring either. I do believe. Yanni will tell you, I watch, I watch different things all the time. I know everything that's going on. And the only thing that charges me up is crimes against children. And I still get charged up about that. So can't help myself. It's the way I am. So, and, and it's also about my own wounded child because I know what those kids are going through. I know exactly how they feel. So that really gets to me, you know. And the, per, the, per, the perpetrators aren't actually in their right mind. 
they're not thinking about the child actually they're thinking about their own selves so I'm not even going to go there but what I'm saying is that you you have received this empowerment use it wisely you know so let's get on with our meditation for the day because it's Sunday woohoo <laughs> I'm in a funny mood. It's Sunday. We've got squirrels running around. I really love that. I would like the deers to come in, but we put up a fence now because we have pigs. We don't have pigs, but there are pigs around here. And they um, got in through our fence, went into the neighbor's uh, garden and ate all their vegetables. So now we're having to put a new fence up. And because of that, we're not having any deers in, which is sad because I like the deers often they come with their babies which I really love I love the babies and I always feel very um I don't know joyful when I see them and ooh. one morning I was meditating I'll just tell you this before we start one morning I was meditating out the side there and when I opened my eyes there was this massive um deer but you know the male deer with the big horns massive horns and it just stared right at me as I very gently opened my eyes it was probably about um, 12 feet from it like three meters from me and it just stared right at me and I just I froze not because I was frightened but I froze because I wanted to savor the moment it was amazing it just everything went through me at that point it just stared right at me and we know that there's a family of deers here with the babies every year. So there we go. Okay, let's start. So we know we do our breath work and we do our um, breathing, whether it's uh, the breath of fire, the Wim Hof, whatever form of breathing you want to do. You hold your breath, you squeeze in your bottom, squeeze in your belly, lock down your neck, hold the breath for as long as you can, release. We do that twice and on the third round, we hold our breath, but we don't squeeze, we don't hold, we just relax our body so that the chi moves through us. It's energizing our physical body first. Okay, let's go. Okay, so mudras, let's start our breathing. Breathing in, hold and squeeze. release and again breathing in hold and squeeze And release last round
breathing in, hold and relax. Closing your eyes, breathing in and out through the nose, concentrate on the sound of your breath, the feeling of your breath as it enters and leaves the nose. In your mind you can use the mantra, so on the in breath, hum on the out breath. Good, and on the in-breath now, taking your breath, your awareness into your brain, your third eye, your pineal gland and connecting with the water in the pineal gland. So breathing in, connect with the water and as you breathe out, imagine that you're creating a ripple of light on the water that reverberates out into your brain and then connects with the water surrounding the brain. So breathing in, connect with the water and as you breathe out, sending a ripple of light through your brain and into the water, connecting the two vibrations of water. and now the in-breath remains the same and the out-breath gets extended out into the room. So breathing in, connect with the water, breathing out, creating a ripple of light that goes out into the room. mind's eye and your imagination, I'd like you to imagine a small lift and a very beautiful version of you enters the lift. Using your breath and your intention, you're going to move the lift down to your heart chakra. Breathing in, connect with the lift and as you breathe out, sending it down through your head. Breathing in, connect and down into your throat. Breathing in, connect, and down into your heart chakra. The lift door opens, 
and that beautiful version of you walks down the corridor into the space of your physical heart. From here you take your eyes, your breath, your awareness, your attention down to your physical heart. See your heart beating inside your chest and that small version of you awakening the light. And as you breathe in, you fill the heart with light. You take your breath, your awareness, your intention to your heart. Fill it with light. And as you breathe out, you create a ripple of light that's like ripples on a pond, on a lake of water. And I want you to imagine that that ripple you're creating is in fact water. So I want you to feel it like water rippling out from your heart that's pure light. Breathing in, connect. Breathing out, creating that ripple of water. Good, and now you're going to move the vortex of your heart into your heart chakra, utilizing your breath and your intention. You breathe into the heart, and as you breathe out, imagine it moving over into your heart chakra. Breathing in and out. And now just taking a few breaths and allowing it to stabilize. Using your breath and your intention, you're going to now empower your zero point vortex. The vortex that spins around the outside of your body at a distance chosen by you. Could be a meter, could be two meters, whatever it is you choose. And this zero point vortex moves in an anti clockwise manner. So as you breathe into your heart, you fill it with light and love. And as you breathe out, imagine that breath emanating from your heart and spinning around outside your body in an anti-clockwise motion. And each breath you take, your vortex becomes stronger and stronger, faster and faster. And as it becomes stronger, it starts to grow and it moves down to your feet and up past your head until you're completely inside this vortex that looks like a tornado, wind moving very, very fast in an anti-clockwise motion on the outside of your body. And as it moves faster and faster, you start to stabilize it using your intention and your breath. So you breathe in the words, I am love. And you breathe out the words and empower your vortex with, all is love. Breathe in, I am love. Breathe out and empower, all is love.
good. And now you're going to take the love and the light from your heart and place it in the crystalline grids of Mother Earth. You breathe in to your heart chakra and as you breathe out you send that love and light down to your hips. You breathe into your hips and as you breathe out sending it down into your feet. You breathe into your feet and breathe out into the grids. Now you take your breath, your eyes, your awareness, your attention to your feet. Imagine your feet firmly on the ground and you're breathing in and out through the bottoms of your feet, through your soles of your feet. And as you breathe in and out, Mother Earth breathes in and out. You breathe in the energy of Mother Earth, all of her knowledge. And as you exhale, you gift her your energy, your strength, your love. And you create a unity between you and Mother Earth, breathing in and out in perfect harmony. Concentrating on your feet and the rhythm of the breath. And as you do, Mother Earth's prime creators gather around you. The divas, the fairies, the pixies, the gnomes, the two dididanans, the leprechauns, the little ones, the elementals of earth, fire, air, water, ether gather around you in sacred circle and you take a moment to connect with them. Now taking your awareness, your eyes, your breath and your attention to the crown chakra at the top of your head. And you're going to empower your crown chakra, breathing in to the crown chakra and as you breathe out, see the crown chakra spinning around and around. For women it's anti-clockwise, for men it turns clockwise. So breathing in, connect, breathing out, empower. Empower your connection with the universe, your connection with home. And home is represented by a golden light out in the universe that may look like a vortex, a ball, a lake. It may be associated with a planet or an interdimensional reality. It's home for you. So as you empower your crown chakra by breathing in and out, feeling it spinning around and around, you're going to send a ball of love and light that represents you from your crown chakra to home. So you breathe in, you connect, and as you breathe out, just send a little ball of love and light out into the room.
taking your eyes, your breath, your awareness, your intention to that ball of light above your head and understand that your breath and your intention is leading and guiding that ball of light home. So you breathe in, you connect. As you breathe out, imagine that you're sending that ball of light up through the roof of the building you're in. Breathing in, connect and send it up past the trees and into the sky. Breathing in and out, connection movement, very fast, up through any clouds now. Up into the outer atmosphere of Mother Earth. Up through the atmosphere and out into the universe and taking a moment to soak in that vast, unlimited, powerful universe and all the energy it provides you and your soul. As planets move, solar systems move, galaxies move, they create energy, unlimited energy. And your beautiful ball of light is receiving that energy. So take a moment to receive all that life force. ball of light is being called to the golden light of home. As you use your breath and your intention to merge with the golden light of home, simply breathe in the golden light and exhale the golden light. And as you do, the atmosphere around you makes itself known. You can see, are you on a planet, an interdimensional reality? And as you do, your sacred circle begins to gather around you now. Your spiritual ancestors, your guides, and those that love you gather around you in a sacred circle. All those that you're associated with and those that make up the universe. The white and the blue councils, the green and the brown councils, the red and the purple councils, the Palladian emissaries of light, the Mulcassidic Brotherhood of Light, the Apturians, the Intergalactic Council of Light that represents all nations cosmic police that guard and protect the universe and you. The ancient ones, the lords of karma and the timekeepers, along with the angelic realms from cherubim to seraphim and all those that you hold most dear gather around you in sacred circle and you'll have one minute to communicate with them. And the time starts now. Today they'd like you to open the palms of your hands and allow your physical body to also receive their tender touch in the centre of your hands. <coughs>
understanding that you are the ambassador of all nations and the light. And you're going to bring the energy signature of this sacred circle held within the golden light down to earth to empower your manifestation to empower the earth with the knowledge and the vibration and all it needs to bring it to peace. So breathing in the golden light and as you breathe out, using your mind, your intention, your breath to draw that golden light with you down through the universe. And drawing it now down into the Earth's atmosphere. And for some of you already, you'll feel the pressure on the top of your head as you can feel that golden light with all its frequency and imprints moving closer and closer towards you as it comes down through the clouds, through the sky, past the trees now into the building you're in <clears throat> and as it enters your crown chakra imprinting your entire body as it moves through your body through your feet and into the earth now you're one unity consciousness mother earth father sky and you meeting at the heart the neutral chakra the perfect balance of male and female electromagnetic giving and receiving as this unity meets at the heart you breathe into your heart and as you breathe out that ripple of light is sent forth and the 5D grids open up before you and you enter the grids with this unity consciousness and understanding that everything that you feel, envision, touch, create, intent is the new earth. And you're being guided by your heart. You'll have three minutes create this new earth, everything within it, empower it, feel it, and the time starts now.
and holding that reality around you and returning to breathing into your heart. I am love and breathing out all is love. Becoming aware of your zero point vortex surrounding you. And now taking your breath, your awareness down to your feet. Connecting once again deeply with Mother Earth and grounding your manifestation into the physical reality. We thank all of those that came together today to co-create. And when you're ready, you can wiggle your toes, your fingers, flutter your eyelids and very gently Come back into the room. I felt so much today, I was almost dizzy with the energy. I just want to address something, um, Anna, you wrote, feeling drawn to bring the cosmic police here and hoping to feel their presence at this critical moment. Yes, it is a pretty critical moment. And yes, you can call those cosmic police in because universal police are kind of like the... Um, how can I say? When you think about karma, karma returns to everything that you do returns to you, right? So whether it's this lifetime or another lifetime, what uh, karma does is bring everything into balance. When you think about those cosmic police, they're there to um, bring justice to people who go against universal laws. And when they go against those universal laws, of course there's karma and that karma is received whether in this lifetime or another lifetime. So you can actually draw on those, unit, those uh, cosmic police to put attention on something or uh, on a situation and bring it to peace karmically. Um, so you can actually do that and you can ask them to provide we remember we did that um, the one where we asked them to provide protection particularly for women and children but for children look how many pedophiles have been caught since we did that I'm just saying if you go on to um, the ICE website because mainstream media isn't really reporting this but if you go on to that, what, that ICE website you'll see how many arrests have been made it's a lot more than what's being told. So uh, I do believe that the work that we're doing creates an outcome. We just don't see it in mainstream media because they want us to believe in certain things to empower it. So yes, you can use the cosmic police and they're really good for things like that. Because when you go against... The reason they choose children is because they don't understand that they have free will as much as you and I do as adults. And they're innocent. There's a number of reasons, but one of them is that the free will factor. And so anyone who goes against the laws of free will, which is huge, has to pay a price. So that's why, you know, we can teach psychic abilities I can teach that but I, it goes along with a big warning <laughs> you know never use it to manipulate another person 
because you will pay the karmic price whether in this lifetime or another and it doesn't have to come back in exactly the same way either so um, I would urge you throughout the day if you choose call on the cosmic police constantly call on them and say uh, I'm, I'm imploring you to come in and um, bring this situation to justice and balance that's what they're there for they're not there they're there to enforce universal laws not man-made laws there's a difference between the two and so um, you can't use them for revenge <laughs> you know but if you see an injustice yes if it comes under universal law a violation of a person's free will yes so yes use them absolutely a good thing Anna thanks for the question oh well it wasn't really a question was it anyway I'm gonna let you go now and I will see you same time same channel tomorrow and I believe that perhaps next Saturday we'll do something really special they told me today that we will do but they haven't told me what it is so when I find out I'll let you all know thank you so much for joining together and doing this co-creation and I'm sure that having that little bit more deeper awareness of what we've been doing at the beginning helped you to go deeper in the meditation today so have a beautiful day and I'll see you tomorrow lots of love bye for now <laughs>